Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Avatar The Last Airbender book 2 episode number 13 and 14. Alright, uh, the previous episode, it was uh, a tough, like you know, time for Aang, both the episodes and it's still continuing, Appa has not been found and uh, the first, like you know, episode number 11, he was in like, you know, complete, what can I say, rage that Appa is gone, just kind of like, you know, snapping on everyone, even though like, you know, it was a tough time for everyone being unable to get out of the uh, desert. Toph herself was uh, like, you know, annoyed by the whole situation because she can't feel the ground and there was no water. Saka was drunk on the cactus, same with Momo. And like, you know, like it was a very bad situation and like Appa, uh, not Appa, sorry, Aang by the end of it kind of went into his rage mode, his Avatar state. And in episode 12, he realized that he is endangering others by doing, like, you know, kind of thinking more about Appa. So he decides to completely ignore his feelings and decided to continue going on on his journey and make Appa's, like, you know, the concern that he is having for Appa, he decided to hide it. Unfortunately, it did not work out by the end because he himself became miserable like that and we also saw Suki, Suki came for a little bit and there was that whole thing you know the serpent's pass and all and by the end like you know he again gets hope uh, from the little child that was born and decides to not ignore his feelings and they reach Ba Sing Se, decide to go in Aang goes like you know to starts going to search for Appa fortunately disaster strikes as some weird drills are coming towards Ba Sing Se's walls. I'm guessing he's trying to like break it or something. So yeah, then Aang said Appa will have to wait. So I'm guessing he's going to go and uh, save the people now. So let's see what happens in this episode. So yeah, this is episode number 13 of After the Last Airbender. Okay, before we start, kind of check it out. This episode, uh, there's no intro, you know, like so it will start from the chapter number. So be sure to like, you know, uh, sync the uh, timer, like, you know, according to that, like when I'll press play, it'll show us the chapter number. I think so. Like there's no recap, nothing, just the chapter number and it'll start. So yeah, that's just something that I wanted to say. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. And this is episode number 13 of Avatar The Last Airbender. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here, sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. And as I said, uh, as soon as I'll press play, the chapter number will show. So be sure to sync it according to that. So here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. All right. Oh boy, here we go again. Wow, that's huge. Is that a drill? Yeah, I think it is a drill. <laughs> wow. This was what they were making, that means. They kind of mentioned something that they were making something. The Fire Nation. Wow. Okay, this thing is huge. Guess who is in there? I'm guessing Azula? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, great. What? <laughs> the music. Whoa! What the hell is wrong with this guy? <laughs> okay. Okay, they are here finally. Oh boy, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yes. It is big. Yeah. Um, we're technically not civilian, so... <laughs> okay. Oh, what? Oh wow, this is another one of those guys. Who is so prideful of the wall. Great. Dragon of the West. Who? <laughs> oh, is that a mini? Oh, okay. I think it has some kind of meaning like that. Oh, okay. Hmm. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it won't work. These thing like get up on its own. Okay. Oh boy. Ha! Well. Great. Like, I understand they're elite earthbenders, but what, what will they do if they cannot earthbend, you know? Because this girl here... Yeah, great. <laughs> Saka! <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. All right, there you go. <laughs> Saka? Yeah, you're the idea person. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mushy? Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh great. <laughs> Damn. Iris got the charms. <laughs> Iris got the charms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um what? Okay. Oh. Yeah. What? Got an idea, Saka? Oh, from the inside? Okay. Alright. But Azula's inside, so... Yeah, that might be a problem. Okay. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Oofy. Nah, Azula is intelligent, so I'm sure she's suspecting something.
No, the tunnel strategy. Okay. <laughs> you were an active. <laughs> All right. Nice. We're inside. Okay. Oh, so I'm sorry. Uh, no. Yeah. True. And that and also like, you know, she won't get uh, the ground underneath. It'll be a problem. Oh boy. What? Oh, maybe it's a bait. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And we can see what they're doing. Oh, or maybe we can take them hostage. Oh, or maybe we can take the schematics. Yeah. Either of them works. Hmm. All right, but it's metal. So how are you supposed to cut it? Like water bending won't work. Neither will air bending. <laughs> Jasmine. <laughs> it's not good. Okay, what now? Here we go again! Don't you dare say that you're not going to let Iro join. Don't you dare say that. This guy, I thought he changed. He doesn't, it doesn't seem like he changed. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> okay, I understood like Jet kind of saw that. That's a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, he's a plan guy. <laughs> Wait, water can... Oh, boy, that's... Nice. I never thought water could actually cut metal, but in a way... Maybe it can, you know? Taking time. Maybe earth bending would be better, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. <laughs> yes. Nice. Okay. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe earth bending. Oh no, what's happening? Really? That <coughs> only one of them? Oh, it was that. What's up with Azula? She doesn't look happy. Hmm. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay.
Okay, what? Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Hmm. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, it's very energy consuming, you know, using water to actually Nah, it won't work. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh boy, more problems. Ah, now what? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Friends. <laughs> Come on, sucker. Ah. Whoa. Okay. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Who knows? Uh Okay. Really? Yeah, I think so. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Good. Thank God. What will I? Okay, she's going. <laughs> you <just> closed it. <laughs> oh, that's a sludge water. <laughs> oh boy. Ah, nasty. Why are you opening your mouth, Saka? Don't open your mouth. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's water. He's chicken water man. Nice. There you go. Ah, good. Okay. All right. Okay, one good little whack. Oh my! Oh my God! Oh. These people. Great. Wow, it's like a video game <laughs> level. You know the boss battle where stuff are falling down from the top and you have to Saka. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, she's here. Okay, it's mixed with earth. It'll, oh my god. Nice. There you go. Okay. Oh. Metal bender. Whoa. Yeah. And she's here. Okay. Whoa. Oh. 
All right. Oh. Oh, nice. Okay, the, the rocks are helping. Ooh. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Multiple techniques at the same time. That's after. Whoa, that was cool. That was really cool. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, the thing is breaking down. Or maybe not. Oh no, it broke. Ugh. Okay. Oh! Ooh, good! That was good! Oh my god! Okay! Come on! Okay! It's breaking! Okay! Oh boy. Come on, earth bending or Oh nice, Momo. <laughs> wow, Momo's strong. Alright, what happened to happened to Azula? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's like, okay, now another rock can fall from the ground. Oh, maybe he can, yeah. Okay. Nice. Jump from the top and. Uh, oh. Whoa. Okay, this episode is really cool. This is fantastic. Come on! Oh! Yes! <laughs> okay, but um, the wall is broken in a way. It's kind of plugged in with that drill, so technically it's not broken, but it is broken. All right. Ooh, damn. Oh my god. <coughs> <laughs> Don't lick that, Momo. Ah. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, we're saved. <laughs> oh my god, she's all fine. Yeah, he he realizes that. Mm, and here we go again. Oh, are these those? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. It's those people. Okay. All right, we're here. Team after. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Boomerang. Okay. 
<laughs> gang. Ang gang is good. I think Ang gang is better. <laughs> the Ang gang. <laughs> All right. That's okay. That was this episode. Oh boy. Ah, oh, that was such a good episode. My God, that was really good. Okay, I think um, you know, this is like this amount of a crazy good episode was the episode the episode before this was uh the final battle in the uh water nation uh you know what in the in the final like you know in the water tribe nation where they were like fighting the final battle you know ang becomes that huge thing <coughs> and it was like you know the whole fight and everything uh zuko versus zhao and all that stuff so like those like series two episodes were like on the same level as this and uh, this this was a really great episode like fantastic in all ways okay so this episode uh, here we get into ba sing se and destroy the drill so the drill is okay so which is back All right, so first of all, obviously it was very apparent who was going to be inside the drill. It's Azula and his and her friends, and I'm guessing, you no, know, like this was like a, as they said, like this was like a scientific thing that they were doing. In the previous episode, they also mentioned that the Fire Nation has been doing something. So I'm guessing this was that. And when Azula got you know, notified that yeah, this type of thing has been created to destroy Basing Se's wall. Uh, she and her friends came and decided to overlook this whole thing and uh, so okay so ba sing se the the leader guy you know who was uh, who first of all who was saying that oh we don't need any help like uh, i'm sure like he and i'm sure most of the people became a lot confident over confident because Ba Sing Se was uh, unpenetrable in like you know because uh, Iro came before and decide was uh, like you know unable to uh, destroy it and retreat it. But that was because Iro uh, you know suffered a huge shock because of his son's death. I'm sure if Iro was like you know uh, like nothing like that happened, I would have easily been able to destroy like you know the wall or do something and like you know be successful in the siege. So like that's why you know like that that happened. But they like you know they were like oh nothing can happen like you know like it, it's never been uh, broken and stuff. And they were all like you know overconfident. But as soon as they saw like what's happening, uh, like you know he he realized that oh this like you know this is impossible and asked the after for help, which is good in my opinion because there are a few people who because of their huge pride would probably in that situation even say that oh no like you know this is a little bit of an inconvenience but i'm sure we can handle it you know there would have been a lot of people because of their you know overly huge pride they would probably say something like that to after to ang and still would not let them help but this guy kind of understood at that moment and he was like you know what i really do need help here <laughs> and who's the best person to ask for help when the after is in front of me so yeah he asks for help Okay, one thing I I think I kind of um I can, I'm kind of thinking I don't know why like uh, uh this is like a genuine question mm, Iro like Iro seems like a very what can I say knowledgeable and a very like not seems we've been seeing him for quite a long while you know from the first or the second first episode or the second episode you know so Iro like you know she he's definitely one of the best characters he's so full of wisdom knowledge and you know like like kind uh of, like all the good like you know qualities that you can tell like you know like, that you can mention it can be applied to him so like you know i wonder why did he even like you know join like, not join I'm, like he was the fine nation one of the fine nation people he was the son of the grandfather uh like, you know like zuko's grandfather that is like uncle zuko's uncle what did i even say i said that <laughs> the son of zuko's grandfather anyways um yeah he's zuko's uncle so like that's why obviously he's affiliated with the fire nation 
but i wonder why did he like you know uh decide to uh what can i say like you know go along with this because i'm sure he real like he knows that whatever the fine nation is doing is wrong and um like you know iro and and like you know i've all that i've like as far as i've noticed and like you know uh, like i've been paying attention to him he doesn't seem like a person who would condone these type of things uh like he's a, he's a very chill guy but at the same time i don't think he's going to condone something like wrong so i've always wondered why like he could have just said that you know what nah i don't want to be in part of this whole nonsense you know i'll like you know i'll go away or something you know i'll i won't participate in this whole like you know thing that you guys are doing like you know trying to destroy the like you know conquer the world i won't be part of this plan i don't know like i, th I thought maybe, like maybe he could have said something like that and went away not participated in it but most probably because like you know as i said he's like one of the fine nation people and guessing like i don't know yeah anyways like you know like <clears throat> i kind of thought about this but i'm guessing he must have had his own problems you know he yeah maybe he he wasn't able to do something maybe he was helpless like he had to do this because like we can see obviously ozai and the, even the grand like you know ozai's dad that is the grandfather of zuko both of them were this kind of power hungry people as far as i could you know we could uh observe them and real like see what they are doing uh through their actions it's pretty apparent so i'm guessing you know him being the uh one of the family members of them i'm sure he wasn't able to say anything uh in protest or something he just had to go along with them even though he probably didn't want it and I'm, I'm sure another reason was most probably because of zuko you know like as he also like you know after losing his son like he thinks of zuko as his own son so more like and most probably that's another big reason why he is you know kind of going alongside the fine nation because he wants the best for zuko and he wants to keep, keep a lookout on him you know like make sure that he doesn't uh step in the wrong path start walking on the wrong path or like you know and nothing bad happens to him i'm sure like because of that as well anyways okay so <clears throat> right so yeah like uh that happens the basing say uh situation he asks for help and then we get to see the next scene where iro and zuko no they are near the, in the train stations uh iro uses his special technique charm <laughs> to charm the lady <laughs> and get the ticket <laughs> okay and uh, yeah and then the next scene uh we get the schematic get inside the drill that was like you know, like you know like a good strategy to actually you know kind of dig down and go from the inside and uh, like so many things you can do now that you know earth bending you know like and i'm sure like we can do so many more things if we after we learn fire bending as well like yeah so okay that was that and now the next scene is where uh, i don't know like i like in the previous episode i think i said that maybe jet has changed you know maybe he has changed he said something like i'm trying to change or something and then in this episode you know like like he's like sitting with zuko and like iro is like doing his own stuff he's saying that i need jasmine tea he drinks it and says bah, this is bad jasmine tea stuff jet seems annoyed jet seem just jet says um zuko come i'll need to talk to you and here is what it is he says you and i have a much better chance of making it in the city which probably implies that he's saying that ditch iro isn't it or am i looking too much into this <laughs> i don't know i might be a little bit looking too much into this but his wording seemed a little weird in that sense like he's saying that you and i have a much better chance in making it to the city so again like i don't know like i guess he's trying to change but he hasn't been able to like what the hell does this even mean like 
I'm sure he realizes that Zuko and Iroh has been going on this journey for so long and Iroh is like, a, like you know, an elderly person and even though he's too strong, <laughs> still, like, you know, like, they're like family members or something, somehow related. How the hell can he say something like this to Zuko by taking him into a, like, you know, a distant place and kind of, like, you know, saying that, yeah, you and I have a much better place in making in the city and stuff like that. Like, what? I don't know. I might be looking, looking too much into this, but that, like, you know, that sounded a little bit weird. The way Jet kind of said, said that sentence that you and I have much better chance of making to the city. Okay. All right. So, Zuko. If we stick together and he says do you want to join the freedom fighters and yeah and Zuko said that you don't want me I'm sure he realizes that yeah and as soon as they get to know that he's one of the firebenders they're going to say that yeah you tricked us and like you know we don't like you stuff like that and and his <laughs> mess that like you know happened after this i know boils it oh boy and okay now i get it you know i understand that jet hates firebenders it's very natural to do so because every all people have been so much you know, have been tormented by the firebenders but you know i don't know how to say like as i said i can't i can't really blame him at this situation because he suddenly sees that like the, the, they're like firebenders there's like a suspicion going on in his head so yeah okay for that i can say that okay like his anger is justifiable but the thing that he was saying before that you join us insinuating that yeah you should ditch iroh that's one thing that i cannot actually you know forgive him for uh, I'm sorry if I am you know, looking too much into this. Maybe he did not like you know mean something like that by that word. Maybe he just wanted him in his team. But you know, yeah, like I really don't trust him still. Anyways, um, yeah, he like you know he kind of gets suspicious. And <laughs> so. Zuko slaps away the tea. Ah, some good jasmine tea. All like you know <laughs> gone. <laughs> and why are you doing fire fire bending your tea? <laughs> and and Iron jokes like I know you're not supposed to cry or spill tea. Oh my God, this guy. All right. Okay. So one thing. Uh, here. Um, like. Okay. Uh. Oh, just a sec. All right, so Zuko. Uh, no. Wait, what was what was I going to say? I forgot. God damn it. Um, just a sec. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe like you know. Maybe uh, like he's still being suspicious of Iroh. And that's pretty normal to do so because he suddenly sees that warm like you know the thing became warm but maybe iro had a portable lighter you know <laughs> that could be a reason why it suddenly started boiling so i'm sure he is like unless and until he sees the them actually fire bending i'm sure that he will keep suspecting them and uh, you know like this kind of shows that the whole thing that happened before with jet like you know like oh fire nation are bad so like i don't care if the the villains also die that was the whole thing you remember in the previous uh you know, season that's why katara got mad everyone got mad at that saka even and like you know so like he says that he's trying to learn but he hasn't learned anything because from his eyes, these two people, Iroh and Zuko, they must be, um, uh, you know, civilians in a way. Especially, okay, I'm, 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 you know, I'm excluding Zuko from here. At least Iroh, like he looking at Iroh must think that, oh, this guy must be a civilian. So, 
So he's still kind of hating on them. Okay, like if you just don't like them, if you start hating on them and say that, okay, I don't want anything to do with you and go on your own way. Okay, it'll be understandable. Like, you know, like you are just hating on them. But I don't know. I don't trust him. He might try to try, try to harm them again, just like the previous season that how he tried to harm the civilians and not harm them, but didn't care about them. So if that he tries to do like we'll get the answer in the next episode most probably what he's going to do like, if he tries to harm the, like Zuko and Iroh I'll say that he hasn't learned anything you know but yeah like let's just wait for the next episode and I'm sure like you know that the uh, miscon not misconception uh, I'm sure that he trusted like, Zuko to be not one of the firebenders because he had the burn mark, you know, because he thought he must have thought that, okay, he has a burn mark. That means he must have been one of the victims of the Fire Nation people. That means he's not one of the Fire Nation people. That means he is one of, can be one of our allies. So, yeah, like that's probably why he thought that they were not Fire Nation people and decided to recruit them without even asking them anything or you know researching about them but yeah and uh, i don't know like you know like i still don't trust him he still seems a little bit you know suspicious like jet i'm talking about him so i don't know what to feel about him still let's wait for the next episode all right anyways that was that and then like you know ang and katara try to break the pillar and I was really surprised that water was really able to actually take it down. But you know, like as they said, the water current currents are very you know, sharp and strong. So it took time, but they were kind of able to do it. And all the ladies come in again, uh, you know, uh, Azula, Tylee, and I forgot the other girl's name. Her name was May, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. No, those three. And... Uh, yeah, now after that, once, like, you know, like, uh, they, like, Saka, Katara get in through the sludge thing, you know, they kind of trap Tylee into that because Katara can water bend. And then one of the best, like, you know, sequence of what do you call it? Like, action scenes come up, like Azula versus Aang. That was really amazing. One of the best, you know, sequence of scenes events that happened not events but scenes action scenes and yeah that was that was fantastic and like especially the last section where you know Ang kind of goes up and then comes down and Zula kind of fires her lightning uh, not lightning sorry her uh, blue flame and he kind of dodges it and strikes the thing and the whole you know drill kind of breaks and okay so one thing uh they kind of said by the end of it that they lost but i think it's not a full loss for them because they were they were kind of successful in destroying the wall but the thing is like even if it's destroyed the drill is stuck it, it, it acts like a cap or a cork uh, you know like as a cork on, on a hole and in a way, it really doesn't even, like, you know, like, it's not a proper hole. So, like, in that way, yeah, they really did lose. And it was kind of like a, a wasted, you know, opportunity they had to actually break the place and, like, start, uh, like, you know, make, taking people, the Fire Nation people in. And attack bossing say so now what they'll have to do like i don't think they'll be able to do anything because the the drill is stuck so unless and until they destroy the drill completely they won't be able to get in so yeah like it is uh, ang's win now one thing i'm kind of getting um a little bit concerned about is the last scene where like you know jet kind of says that oh like you know i know these people are firebenders and then we get into the train jet also gets in the train and they're in different compartments but we see those the the the, the, the family people like you know the, the the guy and the lady like you know, the pregnant lady with her, with a child and i don't know i feel as if jet is going to do something you know and endanger all these people or something 
let's see what happens in the next episode like it kind of seems like they're like building everything up for that you know we see this lady and this little child here and uh, zuko and iroh is with them so i'm guessing uh you know jet is probably going to do something in the next episode which will endanger not only like zuko and iroh they can handle themselves but the the other two the the normal people the the pregnant lady and the uh and her husband and the child so yeah let's see what happens in the next episode i think something like that is going to happen i doubt excuse me i d doubt that uh jet learned anything okay um just a sec all right so let's start the next episode this is episode number 14 yeah four, 14 yeah 14 of after the last airbender so i'll be putting the titles and the timer here sync it to whichever is a preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one all right hmm Hmm. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, oh my god, I forgot about Appa for a second there. Oh no. Oh, I should not listen to this. What the hell? These these are supposed to have spoilers. Oh, I forgot that for a second. Ah, all right. Um, like someone told me in I think uh, the previous season that one of one or two of these uh, recap sections has some kind of spoilers. So I, I try not to like you know listen and look at them. And I forgot that for a second here. <laughs> like I kind of take off my uh, earphone and all right. City of walls and secrets. Oh, the train, or... Yeah. Oh, I thought that was a train. It's... Okay, it's kind of a train. Wait, they're also in here? Is this the same one that has Zuko? Okay, you're jinxing it now. <laughs> Who's the guy beside Saka? What the? Yeah. Oh wait, that was like the outer? Oh, I did not realize it. Oh, that was like the outer section. This is Ba Sing Se. Okay, I've been making a mistake. I thought that they broke in into that. Oh, oh, that's why they said that they lost. <laughs> oh, yeah, Toph knows it well. Hmm. All right. Oh, no, who the hell is that? Whoa, who is this? <laughs> oh my god. I got shivers looking at her. She seems crazy. And the music also changed. <laughs> I don't know why, but she freaks me out. A smile. Oh my god, her smile! What is this? Haha! 
Oh my god, she's crazy. She seems crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the outside one. Uh Oh. Okay. Yeah, this seems kind of uh, weird, but the, the, the girl is smiling weirdly. Like, it seems as if... Ah! I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh! Wow. Nice. Oh boy, this must be Jet. Here we go again. True, like... Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh... Okay. Saka. Okay, don't tell her. Wow. <laughs> Have a smile. <laughs> okay. Ether of us. Oh, they're going to. <laughs> Extra string. Okay, that'll work. Oh, D. I was favorite. Hopefully, this is good. No. Yeah. Hot leaf juice. I'm going to start calling it that. <laughs> I'm going to start calling tea like that. Yes! Like, the disgrace! Oh my god. How dare the disgrace T? <laughs> Alright. What? Yeah, the people here look... Like, on edge. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice home. Processed. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's even more than a month, so, that's two months. <laughs> okay. Yeah, first let's look for Appa, then... No, we want, yeah, freedom, what the hell? Oh my god, these guys. <sighs> and, whoa, oh my god, that's a cat owl. <laughs> oh, there's nothing like this here. This is the, yeah, this is the, there's nothing like that over here, obviously. Yeah. It's 
Barrel Kids. Oh no. Ha! <laughs> Poor Momo. Yeah. Great. Oh! What the? Uh, my god, is he okay? Yeah, why don't you go get some rest? You need that more, I think. <laughs> you know, always keeping an eye on so many people. Must be tiring. Hello? Um... Oh, you know, look like... Wow. <laughs> oh. Hmm, <laughs> it's an earthbender. Hmm, the king, I guess. Oh. Yeah. Weird place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Oh, he's... He's... Wait a minute. Does, do they realize that they're being kept... Nice, nice, nice. They, I think they know that they're keeping an eye on them. Because they're kind of like, you know, heightening their voice, like speaking loudly. It's a really nice place, I have to say. <laughs> What? Okay. Normal bear? Yeah, just normally bear. Yeah, maybe some disguise, you know? Yeah, she's correct in a way. No, not that, she d they didn't have good clothes. They need some good clothes, you know? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> they are pretty hard, I have to say. <laughs> okay, don't yeah. <laughs> oh my god. What the <laughs> Wait, is this like a rock paper scissor? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? This Okay. Ah! Commoners. Okay. I uh, I really wasn't able to recognize them for a second there, but then I realized that who else would be here? Whoa, Momo. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. No, not that. Oh, God. It, 
he still didn't realize what he did wrong previously like those were the higher ups the normal people are not at fault here <laughs> <laughs> Zuko's like, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, a race. Oh no. Most certainly not. You must have mistaken. Oh my god. I, I don't, I don't think they'll believe him. <laughs> Oh boy, you're making a scene here. Oh, oh, come on, Zuko. Let's see. Let's go. Ah. All right. Oh, wow. Damn, this, this is a long line. Oh. Oh. Oh, this won't work. Yeah, these people are very strict. Who? Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a bear. <laughs> wow. The bear is really happy. Long thing. Oh. Dung. <laughs> oh boy. Uh. Oh no. Oh. Yeah, he suspects them. Oh boy. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Whoa, okay. Ah. Uh, nah. Okay. Yeah, really. Oh! God. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Oh no, the Momo's tail. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Oh, there she is. But someone's following them. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, she's here. Oh! Yeah, what? Uh, no, no, Ang, don't! Ah. Uh, okay. Okay, um... Okay. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ah! some entertainment, you know. Some party tricks. Ooh! Look at that. Ah! The bear is also happy. Okay. Uh, he's going to get arrested, I think. There you go. Finest tea maker. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, what will they do now? Like Oh, is this a king? I think so. But one thing I like no one's believing them. I doubt the king will even believe them, you know? When they say about the... <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Uh... Oh, whoa! What's happening? Oh, it must be th that... Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, like What? So he's like a puppet. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, so can you do something? Can he do something about this? Ah. Yeah, they're... What? Oh my god, they're hypnotizing him. Okay. Great. Wow. Oh no, she wasn't able to. Oh God, because she wasn't able to, I'm guessing, you know, keep them from learning about all of these things. And I'm guessing she failed her task. They replaced her or did something to her. God. 
wow this i you know what i have to be like you know honest here i never expected an episode like this in avatar you know like this like this is some what can i say like <laughs> I never really expected something, it's kind of a complicated situation, there's a lot of things that's happening here, like a lot of politics, a lot of, what do you call it, like, you know, the thing that they're doing here, like, it has a lot of intricate, uh, what can I say, like, a lot of things are happening in the background, and, like, for, a, like, you know, show, like, Avatar, you know, which is kind of, like, I'm guessing, uh, a lot more centered towards, uh teenagers and like you know uh not children but uh an age group like that i never thought that it would be something this like something like this would happen okay i know obviously like there's be, there'll be a lot of people who'll say that yeah like like after is not for children i know that like you know a lot of like you know like what do you call it uh like people like us and even adults enjoy this show i know that that's not what i'm saying I'm saying that the like you know the way the show is like you know the like, you know, constant like comedy the like you know uh, what do you call it the atmosphere of the show all this while you know all up until now you know it was kind of like a show which was like you know I think a little bit uh, focused towards uh, people of that group like you know of young younger ages like for example 12 to 18 or 12 to 20 that type of an age group uh, but obviously i'm not saying that no one else can like you know uh, like you know enjoy this like this is like this is a great show I mean, people of every age can enjoy this show and i'm sure like people of every age will love this show if they start watching this but the atmosphere of this show has been like that for this up until now but this episode here this really like that's why it would take a little bit time for me to actually process you know that they're actually trying to do something like this here like this this you know this episode reminds me of a completely different genre this is not this does not remind me of a shonen anime like uh like obviously like i know like this is like it's kind of like a shonen show isn't it like, you know avatar uh even though this is not a japanese show it's, it's not anime technically but it is kind of you know an anime it, it seems like an anime like all that stuff the comedy and everything this is very like it reminds me of anime like all the time but you know like and avatar really reminds me of a shonen show so like suddenly like you know this episode this doesn't seem like a shonen like this this seems like some kind of uh what do you call it a different type of a show which has like mystery or thriller type of a setting in a way uh like kind of like that because because the whole atmosphere of this episode drastically changed from the previous episode like previous episode we were having an epic shonen battle you know like azula versus ang like you know like that happened and we won and we come inside this city and bam look at this like this city full of people who are just like, you know uh in the dark about most of the stuff and the people like you know the people higher up they are just deceiving so many people just so that uh, like you know this eternal peace can continue the uh, economy doesn't plummet and people don't freak out this remain the city of uh, like eternal peace or whatever like you know an utopia as he said <laughs> like they're just pushing everything every bad thing under the rug like it's as if like they're protecting like, like you know like in a way like it's protecting the children from harm but at the same time by doing that they're actually uh, harming the children in a way but not letting them uh, know the hardships of the outside world because this won't continue you know I'm quite sure of this Fire Nation will attack them soon enough again and when everything comes crashing down the people in this city would be I don't know what they would do because they're not used to this you know like it, it'll be as if you are uh, learning uh, like you know teaching a, a fish to walk on land something like that will happen like you know they were like they were in this little pond there were little fish fishes these people were like little fishes in the pond all having a happy time and then suddenly like a day comes when the pond is all dried up and they are on the land and they won't be able to do anything you know like 
I, I, that's a weird analogy that I made, but still, it's kind of like that, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, like, it's good to actually protect these people, just not protect, but they're basically, like, not letting them know anything so that, you know, they can keep living this, you know, this uh, peaceful, um, keep living in this peaceful utopia. And, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's kind of harming them also in a way. But anyways, I, first of all, um, as I said, like, you know, this episode really changed, it shifted in a weird way. Like, the first scene was really, like, the reason why I said that it seems as if this episode is like a completely different genre, it starts from the first scene, like, the train or whatever, it's kind of like, you know, like we're, it's kind of like rolling in into the station. And then there's this lady who's just standing on the opposite side. <laughs> Hair all flowing, weird, creepy smile, and just staring at them. This is a horror, horror scene. Like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> if this was nighttime and there was just a little, like, you know, lamp just glowing in, in the dark, and this lady was standing on the opposite side of the station, you would run, you would have to run, you would be freaked out completely. You know, that lady just smiling at you in this weird way, staring at you, and like, you know, her hair kind of flowing, it's dark outside with a little lamp kind of, you know, flickering, blinking, and you suddenly see a lady on the opposite side of the station looking at you like that. <laughs> like, that's what it felt, the first scene. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> the music also is kind of weird in this, like, you know, this episode kind of like resembles a like, mysterious, suspenseful, horror-ish type of uh, music. And she's just ha like looking like this, like, you know, <laughs> laughing at you with a big smile comes like, <laughs> and she's like, hello, my name is Judy. <laughs> Oh boy. <clears throat> really, like really in the beginning I thought maybe she was like a crazy lady or something. But then like as time went out I realized that she's basically a government official who's just trying not like you know to keep all of these people not realizing what's actually happening outside and everything. And I'm sure they were like alert of the Aftar and his people because they are actually like you know people who are very familiar with war and what's happening outside so suddenly people like this coming in the city is like a big source of a uh, headache for them that's why this judy comes in and she's like from the beginning like hi like you know you need something here it is like, you know you need to go somewhere i'll go with you you can only to like you think about anything ah the uh, earth king that'll all come late uh, one month two months you'll have to wait like something like that like you know she's she's just on top of them because of that so like <laughs> and yeah like <laughs> the lady really freaked me out judy and <clears throat> anyways and then in the like as we get into the city and as everything we, we see okay one thing i was under a wrong impression i think in the previous episode i said something like oh they like already penetrate like you know destroyed the wall but that was, I'm guessing that was like the outer wall, as they were saying. So this city is all okay. Like, it's un impenetrable as for now, currently. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But for now, it's, it's still not has been, you know, um, what do you call it? Infiltrated. So, <clears throat> like, that's why they said that we lost. Like, I realized that in this episode. I thought they had, like, the, the city was actually that. That was the city wall. But no, that was not the city wall. That was something else. Like, I'm guessing like, from there they had to take the little train and then get in the actual city. So, all right. Anyways, okay. And then uh, the whole thing with um, Jet, you know, him freaking out. And now the thing that uh, the other, the, you know, Jet's friends, I forgot their name. I think one of them's name was Longshot and another, the girl's name was... I forgot anyways like you know those two like 
like what they were saying i completely agree with that like you know, that's what i have been saying like they said that like we decided to change so why the hell are you actually going doing the same thing that you were doing before weren't we supposed to change ourselves so but jet doesn't understand that jet thinks that yeah like okay like you know like um i get it we're going to change but be before that we're going to uh, hand them over to the authorities okay if he really did that tried to do that i would have been like you know what understandable he has his like you know problem with the fine nation people so he definitely has changed because he did not like start attacking them but merely just told the authorities about them but no he starts attacking them you know like the fight breaks out completely like th that shows that he hasn't changed at all so i don't know man like in, in, in a way the last thing kind of i feel bad for him because now he's kind of been brainwashed completely I don't know what's going to happen to him after that, but like in the, at the same time, he, he really did not change and he's saying that he's trying to change, but that doesn't really explain what he did at that moment by like just attacking them. So, and as I said, like, you know, like Iroh, at least Iroh is supposed to be a civilian. So what he's doing is again, like, you know, trying to harm these two people who are just civilians in his eyes uh i doubt he thinks zuko is a civilian i think he's some kind of a uh you know person like jet you know some kind of a um, what do you call it like a thug or something <laughs> you know but you know but i robe like i was like a nice like you know old man and i'm sure he thinks that he's just a civilian so the thing that he did before trying to like you know harm the civilians that's what he's supposed to mend his ways from he's supposed to realize that yeah that's something that i should not do but he just comes in and attacks them and like starts making a ruckus so as i said I, and by the end of it i kind of feel bad for him because he gets caught and like you know brain the whole like brainwashing thing that happens but i don't know let's see what happens to him in the future anyways okay that was that and all right, and then uh, the whole thing with Aang and the crew is like, we, like obviously it's, it's very apparent that they, from that moment on, that they are not really letting anyone, you know, uh, diverge all of these, like, you know, things. Like people who actually know what's happening outside, the war and everything, they don't want, you know, that being expressed. And the, the Judy person was also kind of, like, you know, very much like, you know, stressful about that and like, she's always laughing and you know, that fake smile in her in her mouth always like as if like she's always putting on a mask trying to act all happy and stuff like but underneath she's freaking out she's like oh my god you know <laughs> these people you know they're, they're going to uh, like you know <laughs> my my they'll, like they'll make me make me like you know what do you call it like you know, uh, like i'll be fired because of them or something and maybe something worse actually happened like by the end we see that judy has been replaced or something so yeah maybe something happened to her who knows like these people are crazy in a way but anyways that was that and like you know like and we also saw like um iroh was trying to kind of trick uh what do you call it uh jet by kind of speaking loudly and saying that oh i need like you know a little bit of fire thing to light the fire so i'm going to ask my neighbor for that because <laughs> he's deliberately kind of i'm guessing like shouting that outside but still like nothing ha happened and uh, all right and then uh katara and what do you like you know what's her name Toph. they take disguises trying to get in and uh, the whole fight with just jet, jet starts and then the minister the cultural minister i think yeah with his help they do get in but <laughs> they really chose the worst person to actually ask for help you know just a sec what was his name the cultural minister's name long feng okay long feng that's his name so yeah, as I said, like, you know, he, they, they really chose the wrong person for them to like, you know, help getting in. 
and I think he kind of realized that these two girls are like one of one of Avatar's uh, teammates, and that's why he said something like, "Okay, I'll let you in," because he wanted to keep an eye on them, and. And I think he would have probably he would have probably left them alone if nothing else happened. But they like you know start like you know Ang and Saka also gets in and like you know Ang tries to just dis- starts distracting them. Saka tries to go to the king and that's when I think like you know Long Feng decides that okay like enough is enough. I need to like you know capture them and talk with them privately. And that's what he does. He confronts the Avatar directly, and uh, <clears throat> you know the others. Like they take he takes somewhere else and uh, yeah that's that uh jet gets captured and i at that moment i really was did not realize why jet was captured but by the end of it it makes sense that they captured him because he was saying stuff like oh these are firebenders and stuff that's a big no-no for them so like that's why like you know they captured jet and decided to like kind of uh, brainwash him or something so i think that was the the thing that was doing with the lantern that was i'm guessing some kind of hypnotism or brainwashing i think so but maybe i'm wrong okay okay so they get in and not get in sorry like you know like long Feng talks with them privately and that's when everything comes to light the king is basically a puppet but he denies it obviously like yeah what else is he supposed to do even and he like now i can understand what he's saying you know what he is implying here he implies that just a sec okay uh he says that the king is like a god to his people so he can't sully his hands you know and i really think he thinks like that know because it really seems as if he's trying to make a place where nothing bad happens like it's kind of wrong to say it like that like nothing bad happens bad things happens but he tries to pull it under the rug just to make a weird like you know facade that yeah everything's fine this place is perfect you know so that's what he's trying to do here that's why he said the king is our god you know like the, the perfect person uh, like you know uh who is uh you know who the person who's perfect to rule this place kind of like a god he doesn't actually sully his hand with these type of stuff and he he's just a figurehead he can stay there i'll do everything i'll do all the dirty work and i'll like you know like in a way uh i don't know if he's doing everything for some kind of a profit on his own you know if that is it then yeah then he he's a bad person if he really he does think and uh, what he says like you know if whatever he's saying that yeah i want to keep everyone like perfect here in a way if he really does think like that and there is no hidden like you know agenda that he has i have to say this guy is kind of what can i say uh what do you call it commendable in a way because he basically is dirtying his own hands so that all the other people like even though he's doing bad stuff you know he's kind of i'm guessing silencing people who gets like who tries to like like change this place or who like does some mistake like this like he's like a total like you know uh what do you call it uh like what, do you, what can i say you know he he does he's doing stuff like that but at the same time like he's getting his hands dirty just so that the other people can be like oh this is the perfect place so in that way you know in that way i'm saying kind of commendable but if he has some kind of hidden agenda like he's doing this, all of these to some kind of because of some kind of profit for himself some kind of selfish reason then he's he's like you know he's he's pure bad completely bad but whatever he's saying if he really thinks that and if he really is you know doing something to get that outcome okay i can commend him for that that he is he's making himself the bad guy so that all the other peoples will be able to live a you know perfect life but unfortunately this world is not so you know like forgiving because i don't know if he realizes this but the fine nation will come 
and what are they going to do then you know like the, first of all the people will be freaked out they'll be like oh my god what's happening here like the fire nation is attacking us like was that supposed to happen like, like they'll be confused first of all because they have no idea what's happening and like you know like the like this guy he's like sheltering all of them and like, kind of like keeping them in the dark so that they don't hmm, get to know of what's bad things stuff are happening it's protecting them in a weird overprotective way in like you know and by that result he's kind of harming them so okay let's see what he says after that okay uh Okay, it is the strict policy of Ba Sing Se that the war not be mentioned within the walls. Okay, constant news of an escalating war will throw the citizens of Ba Sing Se into a panic. Okay. Just a sec. Our economy will be ruined, our peaceful way of life, our traditions will disappear. In silencing talk of conflict, Ba Sing Se remains peaceful, orderly utopia, the last one on earth. Okay, now from this, like you know, like from this line, I kind of think he really means what he says. Like he doesn't have any hidden agenda. He really thinks what he's doing is good for them in the long run, and that's why I'm saying that in that way it's commendable for him because he's basically dirtying his own hands. Just so that this place can rename, remain the peaceful utopia of this like, earth, the last place on earth. And yeah, that's really commendable because it, you know, like the amount of mental pressure that it actually uh, takes to do these kind of things, like, you know, dirtying your own hands for something, you know, for not for yourself, but for others. It, it really is like, you know, in a way commendable. I think so at least because I think like he is doing really all of these things he's doing just so that you know the people can remain here peacefully but yeah like as I said like you know he's saying that this is like the last bastion of peace in this earth like what like the fine nation will attack you guys so I don't know like, like, what is what is he supposed to do then? Like, he doesn't like have a good you know, army because he's basically sheltering everyone from everything. I doubt he'll be able to attack back the, like, you know, fight back against the Earth Fire Nation people. And they almost really got in. Like, if Ang didn't stop them, they would have been in the Fire Nation people. What would they do then? You know, this this type of thing that he's doing won't help then. You know, like it, it, it's even work count like you know it'll work oppositely like people will get freaked out and they'll be like they'll like they'll be really flabbergasted they'll be like what's even happening we don't know like these stuff are happening outside the walls like, we thought that we are ha like you know happy peaceful loving place and suddenly people are attacking us they'll be like what's happening and i don't know what he like does he even have some plan for that or what or is he just that much of a uh, that much delusional that he thinks nothing like that will happen or something he doesn't seem like it you know he doesn't seem like that type of a delusional person he seems kind of intelligent in a way you know calm intelligent so yeah i don't know and jed gets i'm guessing that was brainwashing him making him forget whatever happened and as i said makes me feel bad for jet in a way I'm not sure what long shot and the the girl will do after that and uh, then the whole thing with judy as we see that like there's a completely different person now uh isn't it yeah that's a completely different person so yeah so judy is just like not her name judy is like the name for that position Kind of freaky in a way you know like yeah like as i said this episode really kind of reminded me of something uh, of a different genre you know it's kind of a weird feeling in a way 
So that was a really well done episode. And unfortunately, we still don't have Appa. I don't know when we'll get him back. And this guy is kind of blackmailing Aang, saying that, oh, it'll, you'll be sad if you aren't able to get Appa back, wouldn't you? And. Yeah. That was it, guys. That was a really great, great episode. It's a really well done episode. And uh, fantastic. Both the episodes that I watched in this video, episode uh, 13 and episode 14. Yeah, both of them were good in their own ways. You know, like it was just so great. So that was it, guys. That was episode number 14, my reaction to it. So if you guys enjoyed my reaction, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. So yeah, so yeah guys, that was it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.